Welcome to Random Gleanings. I'm Chris. He's Jesse. A little volatile out there, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. After a year with virtually no volatility last year, at least from the overall index perspective, um, we've seen it already this year. And, you know, I'm just going to throw a chart up right away. Um, I, I've been using this chart. I just think it's interesting because we are in a midterm election year. Right. And so this chart's showing all year since 1931 with the black chart extracting out midterm election years and the blue line showing the midterm election years. Okay, so to make sure I'm following, you're saying years one, three, and four are the black line, and year two is the blue line. Correct, correct. In in a kind of presidential cycle. That's right. exactly right. Right. Um, and, you know, as you might expect, with three out of four years being positive, you can see the black line carries that, that kind of trajectory up and to the right with some bumps along the way, right? And what's so interesting to me about the midterm election year, because this has been backed up in some of the research that we've heard about, hey, expect more volatility this year, uh, probably more towards the second half of the year that we expect to see some returns. I mean, this kind of spells this out, not to say it's a predictive of what's going to happen this year, but man, oh man, it's just really interesting to me to see that it trades within a range uh, in these years, and then for the first three quarters, for the basically. first three quarters, basically, and then lifts at, off at the point that it's kind of determined. Hey, we're going to be a mixed government. We're going to be a cohesive government. Whatever. Right. At the point that it's determined, markets get back to work, and and business just kind of takes off. So, so you know, historically, the first, second, and third quarter aren't nearly, on average, as right. good as the fourth quarter. So it's not surprising to see the chart kind of lift off in October, November, and December. But, you know, I, it, it— The discrepancy between those years, and again, to be clear, not predictive, but just an interesting historical look at what these types of years have historically done— it's just kind of interesting. Yeah. So this year, what we've got that's different, though, of course, is the potential for rising interest rates. Correct. Um, hopefully, the daggum end of COVID. Um, and so, I mean, there's some other things to kind of kind of think about. You know, uh, we we have not had much in the way of any you know tensions from the Middle East or from Asia. Um, I mean, there's some things we'll popping off in. Ukraine right now, right? right. So, right. yeah, something to so, pay attention to. So, what's so interesting to me though is, is as it as it relates to um, this chart is is what's not working, right? So, if we start to think about earnings, so earnings we're we're in the first quarter. Earnings actually, believe it or not, have been pretty good for the S and P as a whole. And by the way, sales have been too. Now, it's not surprising the consumer's in decent shape, corporations are in decent shape, but what's really been interesting to me, you know, there are stocks that tend to work, we've covered this a lot, there are stocks that tend to work better in rising interest rate environments than, than growth stocks, but what's been interesting to me is what's really happened in the technology sector um, so far in January, first week of February. So the first chart I want to share is um, Google Alphabet, right? So uh, stocks were down. Uh, the NASDAQ was down 10 11%, 12%, somewhere in there uh, through the month of January. And all of a sudden, Google beats earnings by a mile and shoots up back in a positive number. But since then, they've sold off. Um, you know, I mean – Companies in that space haven't been able to really necessarily hold on to their gains. I think Amazon, Amazon's earnings were good too, um, but since then they've basically been um, kind of sideways. So with Google, they've sold off a little bit. Amazon's been able to hang on so far. Now Amazon year to date is down about um, three and a half, three and three quarters percent. But the crazy thing is, is if you look at the one-year numbers mm -hmm. on Amazon, the one-year number is down 3.86% on That's Amazon. Wild. So what's starting to happen is some of these companies that we consider the best companies in the United States, the best companies in the world, are just flatlining relative to uh, their stock price moving forward. And if – you happen to miss your earnings and guide earnings lower for the future, like Facebook did, Meta, as they're now known. I wish they'd change their stupid name back. Um, they got crushed 
They were down 27% in a day. And by the way, it has not gotten any better since then. Um, they've fallen off another 6 or 7% as of this chart, and they were down about 3% today. So there's a changing of the guard going on. And will that continue beyond the Fed raising interest rates? I mean, will, will tech begin to resume in the second half? I don't know. But if we look at sectors year to date mm-hmm. through uh, February 7th, it, 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 it's not showing up yet. And in fact, um, energy, we've talked a lot about energy. Um, energy year to date's up 23% through February 7th. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing relative to everything else. You know, listen, <laughs> I always, always feel shy about, you know, patting ourselves on the back here, but we have talked about the sectors of the economy that ought to do well in a rising interest rate environment. And, and we've said energy and financials, and those are the two that are positive year to date. Right. Right. So I, I, it's not without some, uh, historical basis that we that we look at that. But yeah, I mean, those things are working, whereas technology and other sectors of the economy are just not living up to, you know, to it. And and something that we talked about previous, which is the, the market weight cap of those largest technology firms, we see the market pull back, even despite a, you know, 23% year to date return in what was what would what we say 3% of of the market cap of the S and P five hundred, so I think you've made a point to me for a long time that you know there's there's parts of the economy that could you know do very well, and maybe fictitiously double or triple, and not have really any and not effect even on feel the, it. Yeah, not, not have feel any it. effect on the index. The crazy part about those energy companies up twenty three percent, which by the way, I mean they could go down tomorrow. Okay? They could, right. but but they could go up too. The 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 twenty three percent, those companies, the energy sector, Exxon, Phillips sixty six, Chevron, Schlumberger, Halliburton, on and on, those companies make up in the S and P less than half of Apple. Of Apple, right? Of Apple, right? I mean, we could do the math, and I, I wish I, I, I mean, what's three uh, percent? Times twenty three percent. It's not a big number, so it's had such yeah. a nominal effect it's less than on. A percent. That's just it on the S and P, which is negative, while it's really crushing it right yeah, now. That's so, right. I mean, that's just. It's just. I think sometimes it's lost on uh, how the index itself is built. We we've, we've tried to talk some about that, but here's a real life you know example of that small sector of the economy that is meaningful to us, right? Is it is doing what we would think it should do in an environment like this, and yet you're not seeing that reflected. I, at I all. just, I, you know, what bugs the hang out of me is how it is that 98 percent of us are driving vehicles to take the product that they're selling to get around from A to B, taking kids to soccer or to get, you know, going on a trip, whatever, and yet it makes up nothing of the representative market. It mm-hmm. makes no sense to me that's, whatsoever. That's that's. It's wild. All right, next topic. Are you watching the Olympics at all? Uh, it is on in my house, yeah. I just have to go on a rant. What is going on with with these the freestyle skiing? In, I, have you seen the picture, the graphic of where the freestyle skiing complex is in China? It's in this middle. It's like in, industrial. It's like a closed steel mill. It looks like a nuclear power plant. I don't think it is, but I mean, it's sitting next to the most nasty thing you've ever seen. And the crazy thing to me is there is not a lick of snow in sight. I mean, this is what you just sent me. Yes, it is. Holy and God. and what I cannot figure out is, I mean, like if this is where we're holding freestyle jumping, I mean, we could hold it. I mean, you could hold it in the Rockies. You could hold it in the Northeast. Heck, you could hang. I mean, you could. You could do it at Beach Mountain in North Carolina and do a better job. I, I had that. a buddy that went to the Air Force and, and traveled to Cutter, right, in the Middle East, broke his leg on a ski slope in August. So, nice. yeah, it can be done anywhere. 
I mean, I just that is sure that's really not attractive horrible. to look at. <laughs> that's, terrible. That's interesting. Terrible. Well, anyway, sorry. That's my rant on on the Olympics and where we're putting things. Yeah. Thanks so much as yeah. always for watching us. That's that's all I got. Yeah. Go USA. Go USA. Go team. <laughs>